let's remember the time when 3D graphics began to emerge, then it all started with a stretched plane that simulated 3D space mixed with beautiful drawn sprites. And the beginning of the appearance of such effects can be considered the time associated with the release of the Super Nintendo console. This console had eight different graphics modes, numbered from 0 to 7, and it was the first console with dedicated hardware to do graphics tricks, this hardware allowed linear transformations to rotate and scale backgrounds and sprites, and it was all about mode 7. But another important feature of this mode was the ability to not only rotate and scale the background, but also add a step for perspective to create a sense of a 3D world. This graphical method was well suited for racing games and was widely used to create the outer world of role-playing games such as the popular Final Fantasy game, and this effect allowed developers to create the impression of expanding worlds reaching beyond the horizon. So, that time left its mark and gave rise to a whole generation of nostalgic Mode 7 fans. And in this video we will figure out how to create this Mode 7 effect using the Python language and the Pygame module, and based on it we will make a nice project that can be used by the base to create games in retro style. So let's look at the initial setup from which we will start work, there are three files, main, mode 7 and settings. The settings file specifies the screen resolution and its center. The mode 7 file contains a class of the same name with update and draw methods. And in the main file, the application class is written, in the constructor of which an instance of the mode 7 class is created, and in the update and draw methods, the instance methods of mode 7 are called. And if we run the program, we get a black window of the set resolution displaying the current frame rate. And let's talk about the math behind mode 7, and actually it's a pretty simple effect based on two formulas for getting a projection in 2D space, it's a simpler model that approximates a perspective projection, and it's called a weak perspective projection. And for our case, we will calculate the z-coordinate based on the height of the screen, but at the same time we will take the y-coordinate taking into account the focal length of the camera. Of course, I have simplified a lot here, but this will be enough, and then let's set the focal length, and for such a projection, we also need some kind of scaling factor. Now you can work with the mode 7 class, and first let's load the texture intended for the floor, we will need its size and for further work we will convert it into a 3D array. Accordingly, our screen will also be a 3D array, and at the same time the same size as the screen resolution. And we will draw it using the blit array method, and to make it clear, for example, Let's fill this screen array with values for the yellow color and run the program. And as you can see everything works correctly. So now we need a frame render method that returns our array, and we will call this method through the update method. Now let's get to the fun part, let's iterate over the screen array, and after getting the array indices, we will form the x, y and z coordinates according to the above theory, while adjusting the x coordinates so that the projected texture is in the center of the screen, and z is equal to the current height plus a small number to prevent divide by zero errors. Next, to find the projection, we perform a perspective division and apply a scaling factor here. Now we define the position of the pixel in the texture, and to stay within the size of the texture we apply the modulo operation. Calculating the position of the pixel in the texture, we get its color, which becomes the color for the current element of the screen array. And if we run the program, then as a result we get the same perspective effect that mode 7 gives, and it looks like a floor that goes into the distance. But as you can see, the performance of the program turned out to be zero. Even if we have the cycle in height, then if we run the program again, at best we can see one frame per second. The reason, of course, is the Python interpreter and its dynamic typing, but it's okay, and even in such cases there is an elegant solution. The simplest solution is to use the just-in-time compiler, and the easiest is to use the Numba compiler, then we import the ngit decorator and the prange function from this module. And then, in order for the method to be executed with the performance of compiled languages, we make this method static and use the ngit decorator with fast math and parallel parameters, and it is recommended to use the prange function for the outer loop. And then we rewrite the code to work with a static method, that is, inside such a method we cannot access the attributes and methods of the class. So we run the program, and we see that the performance of the program has increased by more than 100 times, and as we have seen, this is a simple and quite effective way to significantly speed up the execution of functions in which there are a lot of iterations and calculations. And with such a performance margin, we boldly continue development. Look, we can get the perspective of the ceiling almost for free, for this it is enough to mirror the already calculated coordinates and put the color of the pixel there. And as a result, we now have a ceiling along with the floor, but there is a conspicuous drawback, 
This is the appearance of ripples when the perspective goes to the horizon. Here we can do some shading, for this, depending on the depth value, this is our Z coordinate, we can calculate some attenuation coefficient and apply it to the resulting color. And as you can see, our image has become much better, especially in the horizon area, but now let's use different textures for the floor and ceiling. Then for the ceiling we will load another texture, and in order not to create a new variable for the texture size, we will scale to the size of the texture for the floor, and also convert the texture into a 3D array. And in order to have access to this array, we will pass it to the input of our static method. Now we need to get the color of the pixel from the ceiling array, and also apply the depth attenuation to the components of this color. So at the output we have a more spectacular result, and as you can see, now it is possible to use different textures for the ceiling and floor. And by the way, using the value of attenuation in depth, we can implement a certain fog effect. So with this fog effect, our scene has become even more cool, and now we can talk about moving. Let's do this based on the time value and create an array to indicate the position, and let one of the coordinates be equal to the time value and then after passing this array to the render frame method, we can use its values as increments to the projection coordinates on the textures. And as a result, a forward movement appeared in our scene, this diversifies the whole picture quite enough, and now it would be logical to start implementing rotation in our scene. So, first of all, we need some angle by which we will rotate, similarly, based on the time value, we will create an interesting change in the value of the angle according to the periodic function. We pass the angle to the method, calculate the sine and cosine values from this angle, and use the standard formula for rotation in 2D space, we do this before perspective division. Thus, we got an interesting movement inside our world from the floor and ceiling, we got some kind of beautiful futuristic room. So these were the main and basic aspects regarding mode 7, and let's see what can be done using this information. And by the way, with regard to keyboard control, it is no different from the control for first-person shooters, how increments are calculated for X and Y coordinates depending on the direction of the player's angle, you can see this on the slide. And now you are presented with the implementation of such control. In addition to this, several interesting things have been implemented here, which I propose to look at in action. As you can see in this project, in addition to the control, the possibility of pseudo-altitude change is implemented, take into account that here the sky moves more slowly than the earth to create a more realistic perception, and this project is available at the link in the video description. If you have questions, ideas or something else, then write comments or you can always write to me by email, which is in the channel description.